Hey everybody, guess what time it is? It's Polyphonic O'Clock, aka time for the fourth Polyphonic Q&A. Blum, blum, ba bum, blum, bum, bladum, ba dum, ba dum. Yeah, no, it's time for the, it's time for the fourth Q&A. Before we get started, I just want to thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Curiosity Stream is the first subscription streaming service dedicated to documentaries. It's a really cool service, and you can look at documentaries from all kinds of topics. And if you go to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic, you can get 30 days for free. If you stick around till the end, I'll give you some recommendations for what to watch with your free 30 days. All right, let's let's get cracking. Right off the bat, I'm gonna hit about half of the questions in one go. Am I gonna do a video on X? I don't know. I really don't know. I just do my videos as they come to me. I have scripts that I sit on for months. Other times I just wake up with an idea and write a video. So there's really no plan to this stuff. I do videos on what I feel like making a video on. This doesn't mean you shouldn't request stuff to me, but at the end of the day, even I don't know what video I'm going to do next until I do it. So that answers some of those questions. Now let's hit some quick ones uh, right off the bat. I'm going to see how many of these I can hammer out in a few seconds. Favorite instrument, Hammond B3 organ. Last concert I went to, Shaky Graves. Favorite new artist, Haley Hendrix. What's my favorite Nirvana songs? Uh, Francis Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle. What recent album has impressed me the most? Uh, Room 25 by No Name was incredible. Favorite Led Zeppelin song? No Quarter. And favorite part of a song is the break from the middle of Fool in the Rain where it cuts back in. And yeah. Uh, favorite Beach Boys song? Uh, uh, Feel Flows. What's my name? Noah. Do I play any instruments? Yeah, bass, guitar, piano, and harmonica. None of them particularly well. Beatles influence? Big. Favorite album by them? Probably Abbey Road, maybe Revolver. Favorite Steely Dan album? Royal Scam. All right, I think that that's a pretty good quick fire. So I want to get into a bit of discussion on Nebula. In case you didn't see, Nebula is a new streaming service that we launched with a bunch of creators. We're trying to fight the the toxic negative atmosphere that is YouTube right now with our own platform that's curated by us, that isn't ad supported, and, and that really just gives us a place to play around, experiment, and do weird stuff. And you guys have had some questions about Nebula, so I'm going to answer answer them as best I can. Oh, yeah, and if you want to go to this awesome site, you can go to watchnebula.com slash polyphonic. All my videos are there with no sponsors, no ads, no blocking, nothing. So yeah, go go give it a try. There's a seven day free trial. You can at least give it a shot. One of the biggest questions I was asked was, will the rest of my Led Zeppelin's epic series be uploaded on YouTube? No, it will not. Those are Nebula originals. Um, I made them for Nebula. I wouldn't have made them if it weren't for Nebula, so that's that's where they're gonna stay, and it's just five bucks for a month, or you can do a seven day free trial. If you don't want to check it out, that's completely fine too. Like, I'm not gonna force your hand, but it would help me a lot, and yeah. So yeah, those videos aren't gonna be on YouTube. They're just, they're for, they're for my Nebula fam. If you can only afford to back Patreon or sign up for Nebula, which one helps me more? I mean, it's an interesting question. Patreon, more money goes directly to me, but Patreon, I'm also at the whims of a platform. Nebula, I personally have some say in how this stuff goes. It's created literally by us, by creators. So right now, I would say if you want to, if you really want to help me, go give Nebula a shot. I want to I, I think we could do something with this, and I really want to try. Will Nebula be able to protect me from copyright strikes? I've gotten a few questions about Nebula and copyright. So basically, Nebula is a safe harbor under the DMCA, and the big difference is that Nebula is going to presume that the creator is operating under fair use. That's not something that YouTube does. Unlike YouTube, Nebula has no relationships with copyright holders outside of their creators and no real incentive to offer any service to copyright complaints beyond those required by federal law. So that provides a level of safety and a level of presumption that YouTube doesn't apply, where my videos are fair use. I use small pieces of a wider whole. I use them for transformative purposes. These all fit within laws in various different countries have versions of fair use. So Nebula is going to presume that me and other creators are actually using that. And if someone wants to challenge that, they can. But we're starting off from a point of assuming we're fair use, which is far more than YouTube gives. YouTube 
automatically any use of any copyrighted work that gets flagged is assumed to be not fair use and it's a real messed up system. Jack Smith asks, will Nebula lead to collaborations with other creators? That's the hope. I, I really hope to do some weird, different stuff and some stuff outside of the music realm too. That's one of the things I really like about Nebula. I think it's going to encourage experimentation, collaboration, and just getting weird with other creators, which is, is, is something that I've wanted to do for a long time and I haven't fully had the means or platform to do so on. Uh, a common question is, uh, right now the Nebula app is iOS only, but Android is coming. We have no venture funding. We're developing this stuff as we go. Also, PayPal integration is coming. I've, some people have asked that too. And am I planning on releasing all my videos on YouTube? And people have also asked about kind of the relationship of which videos I'm releasing on YouTube, which ones I'm releasing on Nebula. I'm going to be releasing regular weekly videos on YouTube. That's not going to change, but I'm going to be doing Nebula originals that are going to be specific to Nebula. Some of them will be kind of outside of my format. Some of them will be more ambitious stuff that I need some more funding or some help with. Um, yeah, so there's going to be some Nebula originals coming. I have a bunch of ideas in the chamber that I need to figure out how to execute on. Joe Reich said that I mentioned some of my videos were demonetized or straight up blocked. He asked which ones those are. So usually when they are blocked, I trim songs down and re-upload them. So there's countless videos where I've trimmed clip clips and clips of songs down. Um, but for example, my Beatles love, I no matter how small the sound clips, no matter how transformative the piece, pretty much anything got flagged and auto blocked and so that video actually has big snippets missing from the audio if you watch but on nebula it's completely intact my jack white my first jack white video is blocked in some countries it's not blocked on nebula you can watch it from wherever you want but going forward i'm gonna upload the first version of something i make on nebula so a lot of the time you'll see stuff with kind of longer song clips i'll let the music breathe a little more um whereas on YouTube, a lot of the time, I just need to cut things shorter to the point where it's actually absurd some of the stuff that I can't do. I think that's about it for the Nebula questions. Um, thanks for asking, and thanks, you guys. Nebula's rollout was really bigger than we expected. Um, it's already doing really well, and your guys' support is a big reason for that, and I'm really excited to see uh, what Nebula has to offer. So please, just, just give it a shot. Um, really, that's all I can ask. If you don't want it, that's fine too, but really it means a lot to me. So now let's go on to some some questions about stuff. Um, where to start? F fun fact, the, the order I'm actually answering these questions in probably isn't the order that they're going to appear in the video because I am going to edit the sound around, so who knows? What are my biggest dreams for this platform or in life as a whole? Um... I, I want to keep making cool videos and keep pushing myself. Eventually, I kind of want to start to branch out to some more documentary work. I have a documentary series that I've had in mind for years that I really want to um, make. So hopefully I'll be able to get a chance to see that into fruition sometime. And for life in general, I want to keep making cool stuff about music. I want to be a parent sometime. That's that's a high aspiration for me. I want to retire young enough to drop off the map and live at a cottage. And that's that's basically, those are, those are the dreams. How do I balance facts and opinions carefully? And the second half of that question kind of gets to, gets to that, what's my academic background? I'm trained in journalism. So that's really where everything I do comes from. It comes from a journalistic background. So I try to be objective with my facts, but I also... I do have opinions and I try to make it pretty clear when things are my opinions, even though I think it's kind of implied a lot of the time, but yeah, no, it's just, it, it's a careful balancing act, but it kind of comes naturally, I think to me, I don't put that much thought into it. It just, it feels right. That kind of goes into a few other questions. Did I study music or anything related to cultural sciences or ethnology? I did some music studies in my undergrad. And I've, I've always toyed with the idea of doing a master's in musicology, but that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, so, and, and then I, I minored in English Lit, which also helps with a lot of this stuff. 
Um, did I ever want to work in radio? Yeah, I, I absolutely did. I love radio. I'd still love to work in radio. Um, I've had a podcast. I've had I've, I've worked in radio a little bit in my undergrad. I, I did a news show on the campus radio station, and one of my courses also aired shows on the campus radio station. So yeah, I, I really like radio a lot. What made me develop my animation style? combination of a couple things, mostly just feeling stuff out, putting my best spin on stuff I saw from creators like Nerdwriter or Captain Christian, and then I also, this is, <laughs> so so my, my graphic design background is making forum signatures on hockey forums, shout out to the VHL, so, you know, that's where a lot of my kind of graphic design background comes from, and I've transposed that into video editing. When did I first realize music is the topic I want to study in depth? Pretty young. I Growing up as a kid, I actually wanted to be a sports journalist, um, but then the Leafs were really, really bad when I was in high school, and I developed an interest in music, so that kind of shifted me uh, towards towards music, and music journalism, honestly, like like ninth grade, maybe is probably when I first realized I wanted to do music journalism and it's kind of stuck with me since. What do I think of Bill Wirtz? I just think he's awesome and weird. I really wish that I had the the creative chops that he does and the comedic chops that he does. Doing a polyphonic video on him, maybe, but I think part of the charm of Bill Wirtz is that he just defies explanation and definition. And I think when you try to boil it down uh, in the way that polyphonic does, I think you might... I just, I just don't think it'll play well, but maybe, who knows. Do I read music-related books? Um, sometimes I'll often read snippets of books on Google Books or, uh, things like that. And, and I do have, I do have a few books on Bob Dylan and on the Beatles and stuff, but generally my sources tend to be from, uh, interviews. I watch and listen to a lot of interviews from artists and read a lot of articles in, like music magazines. So it tends to be more magazine stuff than book stuff, but every now and then I'll, I'll pull stuff from books. Um, please explain why I hate Brian Adams. No. What do I say to people who don't respect comedy or novelty music? I say listen to Tim Minchin and listen to Flight of the Concords. I think comedy music is awesome and I think making music funny is a really difficult task and I think it's a shame that people kind of overlook how brilliant it can be when you meld comedy and music together. Don't go to my channel says that I enjoy reading, but can I suggest some comics that everyone should check out? That's actually, that's why it's funny you should ask that, because I think everyone should check out Saga, and I'm starting a podcast about it. So me and Jonathan from Make Stuff both love Saga, so we've started a podcast where we're reading through Saga issue by issue um it's called horns and wings stuff is on the screen for where you can go check it out it is either live now or coming live soon so so saga is probably my favorite thing ever written so that's one and then also if you want more comics jeff lemire read more jeff lemire everybody read sweet tooth read descender read essex county of course um the underwater welder uh, just every, everything Jeff Lemire touches is solid, solid gold, and I love it. Oh, Black Hammer, too. Oh, my God. Black Hammer is so good. Yeah, Jeff Lemire. I, I stand Jeff Lemire. My favorite YouTube channels. Okay, so in, in the music realm, Volksgeist, Middle Eight, Twelve Tone, all these guys are just, just absolutely awesome. Um, so go check them out. Outside of the music realm, I'm a giant ContraPoints fan. I think she's awesome. Um, I like Steve Dangle a lot. He makes hockey videos. Nerdwriter was always a big influence on me. Uh, I, I've watched a lot of Crash Courses. Um, uh, also, I gotta give a shout out to The Plain Bagel, my buddy Richard. Um, he does awesome videos on finance, so, so, so check him out too. Uh, do I think artists intend the things that critics like myself rave about, such as metaphorical meanings or complex key changes? I really don't know. I think sometimes they do. Uh, I think often it comes naturally, but I don't think that that, that I, I don't think that cheapens the analysis in any way. I think that 
that's part of the fun is kind of speculating on whether this was done or pur- on purpose or not. And I think there's there's a lot of subconscious stuff going on. And I think uh, to, to go back to some of my favorite YouTubers, I think when you look at stuff like what 12 Tone does, where he looks at these popular songs through a theory lens, you see that whether these people knew it or not, they had something intuitive that would make this song sound good. And they might not have even known that the theory behind it, but by looking at the theory, we can understand what it was that they were intuiting. Do I ever plan on setting up a polyphonic discord? There is a polyphonic discord available to my patrons, but as of right now, I'm opening it up to the public. So you can go there. Don't be a dick. Talk about music. Um, yeah, it's for my patrons. There's still going to be a specific private channel. But, but yeah, uh, hopefully it can turn into a bit of a place to talk about music. What are my top five Dylan albums? In no particular order, Blonde on Blonde, Bringing It All Back Home, Desire, Blood on the Tracks, and I want to say Time Out of Mind. I really do. Um, yeah, probably Time Out of Mind. What video editing software do I use? Adobe Premiere and some After Effects. Do I use specific third-party plugins? Uh, no, I have never used a third-party plugin in my editing. The first band that I that really liked or really got me into music. Growing up, I listened to a lot of uh, Blue Rodeo, Great Big C, uh, Tragically Hip, uh, stuff like that. But the first bands that I really discovered on my own and got into were uh, my brother and I got really into Billy Talent. And then Sum 41, I loved Sum 41. The first album I probably bought myself would have probably been uh, Half Hour of Power by Sum 41. And then I also got really into the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They were another big band that made me super into music. Do I know or appreciate foreign artists? Uh, not not nearly enough. Um, I like Jacques Brel a lot. Brel's really cool and not foreign to me, but I mean, foreign is also just a completely relative term but a french language band that i like is carqua too um what's my favorite music genre good music um and who are my favorite bands in that genre good bands uh are there any artists i hate so much that i would never cover on this channel no maybe nah you like jazz uh, yeah, it's, it's a B movie. It's a meme. Uh, am I a fan of musical theater? Yeah, I'm not like a big musical theater nerd, but I like musical theater. Uh, some of my favorites, uh, I like Phantom of the Opera. I saw it in London's West End and it blew my mind seeing it live. Uh, Hades Town is incredible. I've, I've always loved Aeneas Mitchell's, uh, album and now that it's a musical, it's really cool too. Um, obviously Jesus Christ Superstar, the Lion King musical. Oh my God. God, if you get a chance to see the Lion King musical, it is, it's one of the coolest things you will ever see. Uh, why has rock music died off in popularity? So I think there's a couple reasons for this, but I think what it really boils down to is rock got kind of stale. And I think the reason rock got stale is that for a long time, like most of the people making rock were middle class white dudes. Now, before you go yelling at me in the comments, yes, there were exceptions, and no, I don't have a problem with middle class white dudes. I am one. It's just when an entire genre is made up of people of similar backgrounds, it's bound to get homogenous. And that's why, as Middle Eight has said, I think some of the most interesting stuff in rock right now is happening through women, and, and I think you can add people of color to that. Um, the other side is... I think rock died off for the same reason jazz died off, which is that it just got amalgamated into everything. Everything draws from rock now uh, from time to time, just as rock and everything else drew from jazz. So I think that that's, in short, part of the reason rock died off. And also just, I don't know, music comes in ebbs and flows. People people like things differently. Why did Why does anything die off? Why do we exist? What is time? Uh, who's my favorite drummer, guitar, rhythm and lead, bassist, and keyboardist? Um, so my favorite drummer is probably Stevie Wonder. My favorite gu rhythm guitar is probably Hendrix. His rhythm guitar playing is incredible. My favorite lead guitar, if I can't pick Hendrix again, might be um, Mark Knopfler. My favorite bassist, there's a whole lot. I like a lot of bassists, but today I'm feeling Charles Mingus. And keyboardist, John Paul Jones. His his keyboard work is severely overlooked. I love John Paul Jones. Am I from Texas? 
No, I'm from Ottawa. Miranda asks what it meant in my video on trans people when I said it was a personal topic for me. I, I have some people in my life that are trans that I care and love about very much, and I think it's one of the most important issues of our day. So, so that's why it's a personal topic for me. And she also asked if I could do a video on To Pimp a Butterfly. I did. It was the first video I ever made, the second I ever released, and I hate it now. But I want to, I, I definitely want to redo it or do do some more Kendrick someday. Vinyl collection. Yeah, here's a picture. Pick from that what you will. It's not my whole collection. It's the ones that are in this cabinet. My opinion on the Yesterday movie? I, I think it's fun. Do I think it undermines the Beatles' influence on history? I really don't care that much. I think it's a fun movie if you can suspend disbelief. Who do we gripe to at YouTube about their crazy ideas of fair use? I have no idea. And and Troy Adams asks, how do we propose this problem? I think if, if you look at what we're doing with Nebula, I think maybe not all creators, but you should be able to whitelist creators after a certain time and presume that they're using fair use. What are my passions outside of music and YouTube? I'm a really big skier. I love downhill skiing. It's basically my favorite thing on earth. I love hockey a lot. I like reading. I read a lot of sci-fi. Some of my favorite authors are Asimov, Legin, Neil Gaiman, Kurt Vonnegut. And I just really like learning stuff. I'm really into podcasts. I'm into history too, which is actually why I've been watching The Real War of Thrones on Curiosity Stream. The Real War of Thrones is a docudrama series that documents the Hundred Years' War, which forever shaped European history. It's honestly a really cool series, and I highly recommend you check it out. And Curiosity Stream is the first streaming service dedicated exclusively to this kind of content. It's about how helping us learn and understand new things. Another thing I watched recently was The Jazz Loft, according to W. Eugene Smith, which is an incredible documentary that takes a real fly-on-the-wall look at some of the all-time greats in jazz. It's, it's just a captivating watch if you're interested in music history, which obviously I am. And there's more than 2,400 other titles to choose from. So don't just take my word for it. If you go to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic, you can try it out at no cost to you. With the coupon code polyphonic, your first 30 days will be free. And after that, membership is just $2.99 a month. So really just check out this platform, guys. Show them that you support my channel and and try it out. Learn something new. And on that, I think that's, that's about it for the Q&A this week. Thank you all so much for your support. Thanks for your questions. I'll, I'll do another one of these sometimes. They're, they're always fun. So yeah, bye.